Welcome back to Riding Glides. Today we're going to be reviewing the newest scooter from E2 or E2, depending on how you pronounce it. It's E hyphen T W O W. Now, what they actually wanted it to stand for was E2 wheels. Slightly confusing, so the E2 and then the W for wheels. So everyone calls it E2 or E12, whichever you want to call it. We are going to be reviewing their latest model. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's folded up. I did this on purpose, so I wanted to show you how compact this scooter is. E2, E12 are known for making really high quality, very lightweight scooters that still sort of pack a punch. And I'm presuming this is gonna be the same, but obviously we're gonna take it out and give it a proper test. Now, very, very simple. The back here, you just push down on the fender. Hmm, let's try that again. <laughs> push down on the fender and lift up. That's locked in. Handlebars the same, lift them up, they slide in. Now they're totally locked in. And also, you can adjust the stem on it. So for different height riders, you're gonna be able to have it higher or lower. So first setting is here. You literally just push that in, lift up for the higher setting there. Lock it back off. Really, really simple scooter. So because this scooter is so compact, um, it's hard for the camera to actually see it. It's quite small compared to the big scooters that we, um, we often uh, review. So I'm going to just lift it up here onto my lap just to give you a better idea of the profile. We usually start at the motor, and in this case, we will do that as well. There is no rear motor on this scooter. It's front wheel drive. So we have a 500 watt brushless motor at the front, nominal power. This gives about 700 watts of peak power for acceleration. That complies with a lot of the EU laws um, around scooters in a lot of countries in Europe. Obviously in the UK, we're not quite there yet. Now, instead of having a motor at the back, so it's not dual motor, we have a drum brake. So we have a rear drum brake. You'll see there's no brake at the front, but that's the motor incorporates a regenerative brake, which is controlled from the handlebars as well. And then at the front, you're not gonna be able to see it, because obviously the regen, uh, regen brake uses the motor to brake. So, fender at the back, can be a footrest, can be a brake as well, if you need to apply your foot onto that in emergencies, but protects you from all sorts of muck flying up at you, etc. Underneath that, and around the drum, we've got these eight inch tires. These are solid tires, both front and back. The reason for that is they can be a bit more slippery solid tires, not quite as comfortable, but this scooter is all about convenience. We don't want punctures. It's just a nip from the train station to your house, that type of thing. It's a last mile scooter. I mean, obviously it goes further than that. It's, you can pick it up, bring it into a cafe with you, that type of thing. So it's all about ease of use. Right, so we have reflectors on the back. Flex on the sides, as you can see moving along here. So when you're in bright light, they're caught when you're in the dark, but there's light shone on the scooter. They're gonna reflect back so people know where you are. As well as that, we also have lights, uh, which we'll show you shortly. Um, there's a rear light on the fender here, which is a rear light, but also a brake light. So when the brake's applied, that light intensifies. And then we have a headlight right up the top on the stem there, but we'll show you that in a minute. So nice, rubber, comfortable deck here. Just watch the light there. As you can see, we've got the GTS for sport on the front there. These come in gray, black, and orange. Um, I haven't seen an orange one yet, but I'm sure it's gonna be like that color, and it's gonna look pretty cool. But gray and black seems to be the most popular so far. Now, because they've talked about the tires being solid, and that does make it slightly more uncomfortable to ride because you don't have that pneumatic sort of give that um, tires with air in them have, they have incorporated, as I just smashed the place up, a rear spring here. So you see, we're gonna give you um, a little demonstration of that in a minute where we stand on top, we'll bounce up and down to show that. And at the front, we also have a spring in the neck. So that's a pneumatic one there. Then we've got the sprung one there. And that's gonna give you a really nice, comfortable ride on, um, sorry, on um, slightly uneven terrain. Obviously, it's not gonna be an off-road scooter with the spec that it's got here. This is an urban scooter, but having that bit of extra uh, suspension really adds to the comfort of the ride. Housed within this deck is a 48 volt, uh, 10 amp hour battery. That's gonna give around 40 kilometers of range, sort of 20 to 25 miles of range, depending on rider weight, depending on 
weather, depending on the ground conditions, but in a perfect scenario with a lightweight rider, you should be able to get just over 20 miles of range on that, which is pretty good for a scooter of this size and at the speeds that it travels. Moving forward up the deck, you've got the folding latch here. So when a pressure is applied to that, folds nice and easy, I can do that in my hand, locks back in place, very good folding mechanism. You've got the charge port here, that's where you charge your scooter. Looks pretty uh, water resistant, the area that it's in. It's about a four hour charge time from zero to 100% on this scooter, so that's quite a fast charge. Again, really useful for that sort of nipping around commuter type environment uh, where you need to be able to charge up quickly. So that's another good feature that they provide. Moving up the neck, you can see you've got the E2O logo there, or E2 logo, which is nice. You've got the suspension cover on the front, and then we move up to the neck. Obviously the folding mechanism comes from here, so there's no stem clamp to have to use there. What you do notice is that pretty much every connection, including the motor connection, which is the other side, I'm actually just gonna turn it around to show you. You see how lightweight this scooter is like that. You can't do that with some of the scooters that we have in here, or most of the scooters. You have these push fit connectors and they have waterproof ratings on them. So from the motor up to the cables running up here, and even the cables at the top, which you'll see in a minute, they're plug and play. If there's a problem, it can be sorted easily. You don't have to wire everything back to the battery or the controllers. It's a literal uh, unplug pop it out and pop it back in. So a very, very nice feature about this scooter. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna place it on the floor. Let's get the stand out. The old versions of these never had stands, which was strange, the uh, cheaper versions, not sure why, but they all have stands now. And you'll be able to see as you come up the neck, you've got the decal here on the front, showing the um, E2, and then we're gonna move up to the handlebars to give you a closer look um, at what's up there. So we're gonna turn the scooter on You'll hear the noise, beep, and you'll be able to see the display there. We'll get a close up of that. What that will show you is the kilometers or miles that you've done, your battery percentage, odometer, and you can, using this button, which is looks like an S on here, you can flick through so it'll show you the trip distance, well, basically trip or uh, odometer, that one flicks through. And then you have the app where you can also look at uh, a lot more information. So this is to show you the app. We've just downloaded it from the App Store, E2O Connect, it's called. Downloaded it, press connect, turned on the scooter and you get to this screen. This is where you can do a few other bits. You can turn the lights on and off from here. You'll see that the rear light and the front light go on. Zero start, that's what we spoke about where if you want to push before you um, the accelerator will engage, that saves a bit of battery, but it's also a bit safer. So you can turn that on and off. This is a really cool feature here. This is the lock. If you press that, back light comes on, the scooter will not work. Turn it off. Now the scooter will work in. A really good safety feature. You can obviously reset your trip. This is cool. Press here, you can record your ride. So wherever you're going, you press record ride, off you go. So, and that will track you as well. And it also means you can track your scooter um, if something ever does happen to it, which is really cool. So then we will go back to the main screen where you can see your speed again. So obviously you can have this mounted on your, I mean, there's not really anywhere on the handlebars there, but if you can find some kind of um, mount that would allow you to have this. You can see how fast you're going, your exact battery percentage, that type of thing. Also, you go into settings, you can set the um, units, imperial or metric. You can also put location tracking on or off. So if you don't want your locations tracked, you press off, location on. There are other features of this. We haven't fully gone into them yet, but these are the socials. So if you've got pictures of your scooters, you're going on rides, you can share them with the community, which is really cool. And if you have multiple products, you can, um, uh, have a look at them here and it will show you about all your products that are on here. You've got your own profile as well if you want it. So really, really cool feature um, and it just shows that E2O as well as a lot of companies now are really focusing on the community and also the app connectivity uh, giving you more control over your riding as we kind of move forward with innovation and technology in the world. And also you can change the speed settings in here. You have to go just into the back end, program one, two, three, or four, and they uh, basically give you a speed restriction. So if you're in mode one, that will only take, allow you up to say 10 kilometers, mode three will be 25 kilometers to 20, and then four will be unlimited. And this scooter should reach speeds of sort of mid 20, so maybe 22, 23, 24 miles an hour, something like that. We're gonna put that to the test, so don't worry. You'll be able to see how fast it actually goes. You can see there's a horn there, electric sounding horn. Pretty, pretty loud though, that's loud enough. You've got the lights, so when you press here, headlight comes on, and also 
rear light comes on, I'll just show you there, so you can see the headlight there, press it again, they turn off. And then obviously, like you said, we've got the power here and the S button there. Now, accelerator. So it's a thumb throttle, so as you press, it goes. Now you can set um, soft start, which basically means you have to push it to go. That saves battery and also a bit safer as if you hand the scooter to someone or grab it, it's not gonna shoot away. You can change that in the app. And also we've got the regen brake. So when it's moving along, you press the brake and it stops the scooter, regenerates the battery as well, uses the motor to do that, so really clever. Just quickly, obviously you saw this all folded up before and I opened it quite quickly. These little buttons here, when you push them in, it allows you to pull the handlebars across and then drop them down. So to demonstrate, push that in, pull down there, push it back. Whereas if I was just pulling it, it doesn't come out. You have to push those buttons first, pull out and then come down. Now, one more thing, we've got the brake handle. This is for the rear drum brake. Like any brake handle, you just use your fingers and pull back. Very narrow handlebars, but again, this is to do with the type of riding that people tend to do on this scooter. So very compact, it fits in small spaces, it's lightweight. It's even got little things like the hanger here, you know, you can maybe hang your coat just or your bag just as you're nipping from one place to another. And like I said, it just folds up, very small, and you can pick it up, I think it weighs 13 kilos. The amazing thing about, amazing thing about this scooter though, it can take 110 kilos, even though it's so small, built incredibly well. Etuo is an excellent factory, um, seeing it over in China where they're manufactured. Uh, it's very clean, very high tech. They're really at the top of their game with um, ingenuity within this sector. So um, it's nice to see that they continue to produce quality products and we will put it through its paces to see if it actually lives up to the spec that they've put out for it. Okay, the weather has held up. We've made it out finally of the studio. It's early in the morning, it's cold, but we're told the sun is gonna start shining soon. So let's get helmet on, ready to test this baby out. Off we go. So on the little E2, this is sort of first impressions really, it's really nippy. I mean, it's just like the old E2s to be honest, really nippy, loads of power for a 500 watt. It's great off the line actually with the little wheels, eight and a half inch wheels, bit slippery when it's wet. Not gonna lie, we've got a lot of mud, leaves, all sorts of stuff on the ground here, even a bit of ice where it's still cold, but it's pushing hard. Yeah, now we're on a smoother ground. It's really handling that well. That's what it's built for. You know, is that commuter style scooter? Obviously, when the rules hopefully change in the UK, this is the type of scooter that will be legal and will be so useful. I'm gonna put it for a bit of punishment in the puddles now because they are quite good in water, these E2s, but you see this one coming up here with these tiny wheels, potholes. Whoa, actually that suspension's quite good. Do you know what? Eight inch solid wheels are not comfortable, but with that suspension, they give you front and rear. It's only a spring. It actually makes a lot of difference. Look, we're bouncing around on really rough uh, terrain here, really rough terrain. And like I said, it is slippery, but it's handling it really well. Here we go, my favorite view out into the fields. Oh, big dip, cleared that fine. Look at these puddles, look at these puddles. Wow. You've got to put scooters through this kind of punishment when you're testing them to see whether they can handle it. Because if you ride in countries like this, which on days like today are absolutely stunning, but 90% of the time are cloudy and rainy, they need to be able to handle the elements. e have always been good for us. We'll hope this one's the same, look at this. Bang! But when the nose hits the front edge of that puddle, I'm just lifting it a bit, but it's actually making it out of there all right, and the suspension's helping, it's sort of springing it up. We're going kind of like eight, nine mile an hour. It's easy cruising speed. This is the life, eh? Sun setting, end of an English winter. Let's look forward to spring and all that riding we're gonna be able to do in shorts and T-shirt. Here we go, look, final puddle. Who's gonna finish me off? Oh my God. Do you know what though? I'm not even that wet. So the fenders are doing their job as well. Oh look, I said final puddle. I've got three more. And the finale. Time for a slow-mo. Messed around in a few puddles. Now we're gonna go and do the speed run. So now we're ready for the speed run on the E2 GT. 
supposedly it gets up to around 25 miles an hour. I'm gonna give that the best go I can. The wheels are very small, it's a tiny scooter, that's gonna be really scary. It's like riding a micro scooter. Um, it's obviously pretty comfortable, but 25 miles an hour is gonna feel quick. Right, three, two, one, go. Let's go. Okay, 25 kilometers an hour, it's quite nippy. Quite nippy, 35. I'm keeping a foot out because it's so sketchy. Fast again, it's really quick, really quick. There's even still a bit of ice down here. This is so sketchy. Oh, 44, 44 kilometers an hour. It might have gone a bit further, a bit faster. Where are you? 44 kilometers an hour. I think there may have been one or two more left in it. That was really scary. The wheels, you, ju you can just feel it. It's, it's like I said, it's like riding a micro scooter. That is so fast for a little scooter. It's smooth, but the wheels being that small, I wouldn't want to be going at that speed for a long period of time with wheels that small. But what can you say? Climb the hill, goes 20, what, four mile an hour that is, with me on it, 92 kilos. It's a really impressive little scooter. Right, on to the next. Then we're going to do the acceleration test against another 500 watt. Right, so now it's time to do the acceleration test on the E2 GT. Just for reference, we're going to do the Pure Air Pro Gen 2 as well. Same motor power, 500 watts, similar battery size. So we're going to just show you, because that's a popular scooter in this country, just the difference. This is a much smaller, more compact scooter, give you an idea of how they fare against each other. Your rider today is Peter. He's going to be trying to get as fast as he possibly can to try and beat me. Are you ready, Peter? Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Oh, accelerating much faster. Oh no, stay with me. Stay with me a bit. No, I've flown past. <laughs> Smoking ya! Smoking ya! Now, that's 100 meters. Look, he's only just getting in now. <laughs> what a loser. <laughs> that could be, the tires are quite small. They bite quicker. Then the bigger 10 inch, we've got eight inch on here. It could be that the battery is a higher voltage on here, so it's gonna be giving more power. Obviously the peak power and the nominal power are the same with the motor. Could just be that I'm a better rider, but. I doubt it. No, you saw that. Obviously, e pretty quick. We'll do the hill climb. So we're back with Pete again. This time we're at the bottom of the hill. It's a 200 meter climb. Again, I'm on the E2 GT 2022. Pete's on the Pure Edge N2, same motor power. Slightly more powerful battery and voltage on this, but same amps. Um, pretty similar, got 10 inch wheels on there, got eight inch on here. The Pure is a very popular scooter in this country. That's why we're comparing it, just to show you the difference. The E2 is smaller, uh, a lot lighter. So we'll see how it does up the hill. Are you ready, Pete, to tackle the mighty hill? Let's do this. Three, two, one, go. Oh, a little kick extra there. Okay, doesn't mean anything at the moment, the speed here. It's all about how it handles the hill. We're just coming up for the incline here. Both 500 watt motors, this is steep, really steep. Not many 500 watt motor scooters make up this hill. How are you getting on, Pete? To be honest, it's all right, it's climbing. Oh no. It's getting there, oh, It slowly. feels like it's catching me. This is the steepest section now. We're still poodling. We're flat, oh, I can oh, see him, I'm he's taking me on the left. Oh. It's, like, it's like two tortoises. <laughs> Come on. Right, it's just getting slightly less steep. Gradients working in our favor. He's ahead of me now, so it has climbed slightly better. I'm pulling Could off. Could be the wheels, who knows, the tires are big scooters, big wheeled scooters often do well on the hills. But I'm hoping that I can pick up speed a bit quicker. Nope. I'm still at eight kilometers an hour. Are you flat out? I'm pushing up to 12. He's at 12. 13, 14. Oh, come on. Ah, oh, he's beaten me. That was a finish line. How annoying. All right, come back in, Pete. Well done, winner. <laughs> Hate losing. Um, what's so interesting about that is, the Ito is actually faster, better accelerating. We saw that over the 100 meters. But when it comes to a hill, it's obviously a bit more traction on the Pure Air Pro. Maybe that's to do with the bigger wheels. Like I said, bigger tires often perform better on the hill. All right, maybe it's the rider as well, we don't know. But 
Well done to the Pure. Both made it up though for 500 watt scooters, so that's really impressive, and there aren't many that do that. So, on to the next challenge. Let's go. We'll check the brakes as well. So now we're gonna do the brake test on the E12. We've got a right lever here, which actually does the rear brakes. We've got the rear drum, and we've got this regen brake here, which I've set to maximum on the app. So that's gonna obviously use the front motor to regen the battery and use that as a brake as well. So we've got a single rear, regen front, 15 mile per hour. Let's see how fast it stops. Okay, we're up to speed, we're up to speed, we're up to speed. <laughs> It is wet, it is wet. Rear wheels, these are solid wheels, they are more slippery, so that slid. Use the regen as well, could really feel that actually. It went, you know, makes that noise and you really feel it bite. So I'm gonna put that down there. Let's have a look. Come with me. Oh, do you know what? It's not too bad. Look at that. Under three meters, 10 centimeters. About 304 centimeters, that's pretty good. 15 miles per hour on a scooter like that with one single motor, one single mechanical mo uh, brake, and then a regen on the front. Solid tires, 18 inch solid tires. That's brilliant. Really, really good. Impressed with that. And also, we're going to look at the portability, as that's really what this scooter is designed for. Lightweight to pick up. It's a last mile scooter, although it's pretty comfortable for riding longer distances. So, just to show how portable the scooter is, this E12, 13 kg and teeny weeny. I'm just gonna show you how would it be like taking it into a cafe. So you just fold it down, simply put your foot on the edge. Seems simple, it's not that simple for people who aren't clever. Click it in and lift it up. Now, if you wanna go even more extreme, you can fold the handlebars down as well. Pull them out, fold in. Pick up, pretty lightweight, 13 kilos. Now, come into a cafe, slide it down behind the seat. Sit back and enjoy. Cheers. So another way to show the portability of this e GT, how tiny it is, is to test it climbing upstairs. And some of you might live in flats, things like that, or just need to take it upstairs with you. So this is probably as tight a staircase as you're gonna find. Let's give it a go. It's pretty dark and dingy in here. You might not be able to see, but these are very tight. My elbows are touching either side. So it has to be light. I can't carry it with two hands. It's so light, I can even carry it in front of me if I wanted to, which might actually be easier. There we go. The E2 size is also great for when you're in your uh, practical daily vehicle, or even when you're getting into your helicopter. I've told you once already to get off my fucking helicopter. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it's just, it's just Jeff. So, sorry, Jeff, we're friends. It's not Jeff, you Jeff, Jeff really needs to chill out a bit. Jeff! So we're now at the end of the day. We've done the speed, we've done the acceleration. Do you know what, nearly 24, 25 mile an hour. That is fast on this thing. It's obviously extremely portable as we found out. Um, the brakes are really good. I mean, it's not a high performance scooter. This is designed for people who, like business people in cities, people are nipping about that just want to get down to the shops or to the office, things like that off the train is perfect, but it still has a level of performance. I love the fact they've put uh, suspension on it. Really love that. It does give it that extra bit of comfort. Um, obviously it's not designed for off-road, but you will be going over bumps and things like that at times on little trails. So it's really good to know that it can handle it. The um, solid tires obviously give it that low maintenance feel, so you're not gonna have to keep repairing punches. They are a bit slipperier and not quite as comfortable, but the suspension makes up for that. And obviously you don't really wanna be riding this in really wet conditions anyway. Um, it's a really good scooter in its bracket, really good scooter. I just put the Regen on there and shot me forward. That's what I was saying. It's got some really nice features like that Regen. Now they use Kurz technology with their Regen, which is like what Formula One cars use. They think you can Regen up to 60% of the um, energy that you've been using with the motor to recharge, which is incredible, really. What more can I say about it? It's not my favorite style of scooter because I like the off-road sort of dual motor powerful ones, but as a city scooter goes, it's hard to beat this. You fold it away, put it in your boot, put it under the table. It's so lightweight, you carry it upstairs as we showed. It's just plus with that high level of performance. If you wanna try it out, come down to Ride and Glide, have a go yourself, or obviously anywhere else that sells them. Um, if you wanna get hold of us, ask any questions, 
give us a call, give us a text, give us an email, live chat, we're always available. Like I said, pop into the shop and speak to us. If you like the video, please like it, subscribe. Um, it's really good for us to know if you've got any comments as well, or anything you'd like reviewed. Um, we we'll always answer the questions on there. So yeah, thank you for watching. It's a great scooter, the Eto GT, and we'll see you next time.